What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're going to be breaking down five tips for shorter wide receivers to be successful. Let's get started. Now before we get into this video, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and would like a four month long wide receiver gym workout schedule, all the things that you need to do in the gym as a wide receiver to get faster, more explosive, improve your balance, everything that's going to translate to on field play, check out that very first link in the description below. We break down everything with sets, reps, what to do on a daily basis, the work. So again, very first link in that description description below. Let's get back to this video. All right, guys, so the first thing that I want to talk about, if you're on the shorter side of things, you need to have some speed. You cannot be labeled as a wide receiver who is short and who is slow. That is something that you cannot have. If you're on the shorter side of things, guys, you have to be fast. Now, do you have to be the fastest player on the field? No, but you have to have some kind of speed attributes. Like, if you're a high school wide receiver, I would say, like, if you're short, like, let's say you're like five foot seven, five foot eight, you know, you're not the biggest guy in the world, going up against DBs at the next level, especially who are five foot 11, six foot, 6'1", 6'2", you need to have speed, I would say a sub 4740. That is what I would shoot for. Now, 40 time is complete BS. It's not the most important thing in the world. I would rather have you have game speed than 40 time speed, because again, a 40 time is ran in t-shirt and shorts. Game speed is full pads, you're ready to roll. And there are plenty of guys like that that have game speed, but maybe not the best 40 time speed, right? So now, second thing, how can you guys improve your speed? I'm not just gonna tell you, hey, be fast, right? I'm gonna give you some specific things that you can do. Number one, resistance training. Running with a sled, running up a hill. There is no substitute for that. That is one of the best work that you can possibly do. But while you're doing that, you need to have the correct form. You cannot be practicing bad habits. So you need to have the correct leg drive, the correct foot strike, the correct arm swings. And we have plenty of videos on this channel. If you just search up first down training speed drills, you will find a ton of drills that you can do to work on those facets of your game. Number two, you you need to be doing explosive movements in the gym. So like that gym plan that we talked about in the beginning of this video, guys, like doing explosive movements in the gym that'll activate your fast twitch muscle fibers, that'll help you guys, you know, with explosive movements, all of those things will translate to on-field speed because speed comes from your fast twitch fibers in your body and your fast twitch fibers come from doing all-out effort movements. And all-out effort movements are like those box jumps, hang cleans. Those exercises will translate to speed. So you need to be fast, especially if you're on the shorter side of things. All right, guys, so the second thing that I want to talk about that a shorter wide receiver needs, you need to have some size. Now, by size, I don't necessarily mean, like, obviously height because you're on the shorter side of things. It's the whole purpose of this video. I mean weight. You need to have some kind of weight. Now, people get the weight thing all wrong. They think that, like, okay, let's say, you know, you're five foot eight, 150 pounds, right? Now, there are plenty of guys that are five foot eight that have played college football, but guess what their weight is? They're, like, 185, like, almost 200 pounds. Like, they're thick dudes, right? Now, again, they're thick, but they're not slow. They're not fat, they're able to be explosive. They probably have a low body fat percentage, a lot of muscle that they have packed on. Now, why is it important to have some weight? Because you're already on the shorter side of things. So it, they understand that you're probably not going to weigh as much as a guy who's six foot four, because they just got more mass than you do. That's just fact of the matter out is they got more bones in their body or their bones are bigger. Let's put it that way. So to be able to play at the next level, you got to be able to withstand hits. Because uh, I'm telling you this right now, we play a very, very violent sport. There's constantly people not letting their kids play football because they think it's too dangerous, the head injury thing, they're worried about their kids getting hurt, all of those things. So if you're that guy who's thin and who's short, like, dude, like, coaches are like, okay, this guy, like, I don't even know if he can take a hit from a safety coming over the middle. So you have to do things that will put on size so you can withstand hits. Now, a college coach, though, is not going to be like, oh, he's 150 pounds, he's not 165, we're not gonna recruit him. I'm telling you this right now, when you get to college, you they will put weight on you, 100% fact. Uh, I don't ask anybody who has ever played college football that went in skinny, they came out of their first year probably gaining 20 to 30 pounds. And I know that sounds unrealistic and a lot of you will say, oh, no way. Ask anybody that's played college football who was skinny and I was one of those guys. They big gains in that first year because the lifting program gets harder, they put you on a diet plan. Now, what can you do if you're at the high school level to gain size to be able to play at your level? Because even in high school, you still take some hits. It's not as bad as college, but that's why college coaches want guys who have a decent amount of size. They're not gonna recruit you based on size, but it certainly helps your case. Now, what can you do? Number one, it's all about calories. So if you're a guy who works out a lot, 
runs a lot, a lot of route running, works out in the gym, you're constantly burning calories, right? So if you're burning calories, you need to track how many calories you're burning. Because if you're not intaking more than that, you're in a calorie deficit and you're working against yourself trying to gain weight. You could lift as much weight as you want in the gym. You will not gain weight if you were in a calorie deficit. So I recommend there are plenty of things like a calorie calculator. There are plenty of things that will allow you to track the calories that you burn that you may have to wear. And again, you don't have to wear it every day. You just need to track like a general, this is how much I'm burning on a day-to-day -day basis. How much should I be eating? And the eating part is easy to figure out. You just have to look at the labels of the stuff that you eat. But if you can eat more calories than you burn, you will gain weight, you will gain size. And if you combine that with doing the right things in the gym to build size, you know, like that's again, like, you know, doing those exercises like squats, bench, overhead press, and maybe not the best athletic exercises in terms of bench and overhead press, but it will put size on you. And you need some kind of size, fellas. You do need it. You, you need to be able to absorb hits. So those things, combine that with having the right calories, combine that with a good protein intake to help your muscles recover faster, you will have a recipe for gaining weight. Some guys might do it slower than others. Some guys might be faster than others, but you need to have some weight if you're on the shorter side of things as a wide receiver. All right, guys, so the third thing that I want to talk about, and you probably guessed it, you probably knew this was coming for the shorter guys, is route running. So why? Why, why route running? Why did I start the video with, route, with speed and weight gain besides route running? Because you will get to the next level. I guarantee you this. And you might be the fastest player on your high school team, like can blow past everybody. When you go play college football, there will be a guy lined up across from you every single snap who is the exact same dude on his high school team across the country. He's going to be just as good of an athlete as you are. So what's going to separate you from that guy. And your route running, your technique, your ability to get in and out of breaks, sell vertical, those are the things that they are going to look for, especially if you're on the shorter side of things. It keeps you on the field, fellas. I can't, I, I, I tell you this right now. If you're at a camp and you're short, a college coach will probably not look at you at first, right? Because like, let's say this, you're in a line of receivers. You got dudes who are 6'2", 6'4", you know, all look the part, right? You're freaking five foot eight. You're not that big. Maybe you're just as fast as some of these other guys. What are you going to do to stand out? It's not just going to be a magical thing like a guy's just going to look at you one time. There's a there's a hundred kids there. They're not going to be able to see you unless you do something that sticks out. And route running is how you can do that. Especially nowadays, offenses are consistently evolving into that air raid spread system. Throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. And you know what they want? They want guys who can separate and guys who know the offense and can actually get open, right? So that's what you have to do. You have to be able to run good routes. So there are three things that I would try to work on. And again, you can do the same thing with the speed thing. Look up first down training, wide receiver drills. There are probably 100 plus drills that you could do that will benefit you in your route running. So number one, you've got to be able to sell vertical. Selling fade on your routes is what gets DBs to bail. Number two, you have to be able to change direction on a dime. Number three, you have to be able to accelerate out of your brakes to separate. So if you can do those three things with your routes, you will be a much better route runner. You will be able to stand out, and that is what a college coach wants to see when it comes to route running. All right, guys, so the next thing I want to talk about for receivers, especially if you're on the shorter side of things, you have to know how to read a defense and sit in a specific coverage. You are not going to be that guy that is going to be a 50-50 guy, catching traffic guy if you're on the shorter side of things. You have to know where certain openings are on a defense, where you can sit, and be running quarterback-friendly routes, if you will. So like, let's think about it like this. Let's talk about a, like, a, like a route situation. Let's say you're out of the slot. Let's say you're a slot receiver, and let's say you're running like a um, like a post against cover two, right? So like cover two is where you have two high safeties. Those two safeties are splitting the deep halves of the field, usually leaving the middle of the field open. Certain coverages like Tampa two, maybe they don't leave the middle open. That's We're not going to worry about that right now. Let's just say generally it's cover two. And you have to run like a post or something like that. You probably don't want to run that post, and if it's late, continue to running into one of those safeties and cover yourself. You probably want to run that post and kind of settle in that window in the middle of the field where the quarterback's thinking, oh, he's right there, I'm just going to hit him. That's a quarterback-friendly route. Examples of that comes from knowing coverages and having a high football IQ. So if you're a wide receiver and you need to get better at reading coverages, that's what you should do. You should study film, get in the film room, talk to your offensive coordinator, talk to your receiver coach, your quarterback coach, your quarterback. Those guys all read coverages on a day-to-day -day basis. So get on the same page as them. Know what they're looking for. Know what your quarterback is looking for so you get more targets, more receptions, more opportunities to make big plays, which again, will stand out to a college coach because your film is what gets you recruited. All right, guys, so last but not least is going to be your hands. So shorter guys, coaches are looking for a reason to keep us off the field. They, they're looking for any reason. You're undersized, you know, 
They don't want you on the field. They want a tall receiver. They want a guy who catching traffic, go up 50-50 ball. They're looking for reasons to get us off the field. Drop passes is the quickest way for a guy to turn his head and not pay attention to us. So you need to catch every single pass. I highly recommend this for any wide receiver. If there's a quarterback coach in your area who has quarterback sessions, offer to go out and catch for his for his quarterbacks and be there every single time that he that he's having a session you literally just it's that simple guys i am a quarterback coach i am a wide receiver coach as a quarterback coach every single quarterback session that we have we can always use receivers to catch the ball even if you're just standing and catching the ball you are still getting better so the only way to work on your hands is by reps and normally the shorter guys are kind of the scrappier guys who want to go out and do stuff like that so fellas i highly recommend it reach out to a quarterback coach in your area say you will come out and catch if he's going to charge you for it if you can afford it maybe pay it if it's ridiculous find somebody else there are plenty of quarterback coaches that offer it for free if you're in southern california reach out to me i i need receivers all the dang time to come out and catch for our quarterback so again that's something that's going to help your hands there's no substitute for catching for a quarterback to benefit your hands yes you can do the solo things you know like tennis ball stuff you know grip strengthening stuff hand-eye coordination work all that's great but there's no substitute for catching a football all right, guys, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you guys would like a 16-week wide receiver gym workout schedule, all the gym exercise wide receivers can do to get bigger, to get stronger, to get faster, all the things that translate to on-field play that you need, especially being a shorter guy, check out that very first link in that description below. Again, I'll see you guys next time.